Next, we'll talk about classifications of LC. Credits may be classified from different angles. Next, we mainly introduce some important classifications. Firstly, according to whether credit can be revoked or not, credit can be divided into revocable credit and irrevocable credit. Revocable credit is a credit that may be amended or cancelled by the issuing bank without the beneficiary's consent and even without prior notice to the beneficiary up to the moment of payment by the bank at which the issuing bank has made the documentary available. Therefore, the revocable credit doesn't constitute an undertaking by the issuing bank to make payment. It is generally used between affiliated parties or subsidiary companies or as a substitute for a promise to pay or a payment order. In fact, UCP 600 has deleted revocable credits. Therefore, at present, all credits are all irrevocable credits. Irrevocable credit is a credit that can't be cancelled or modified without the express ex, uh, consent of the issuing bank, the confirming bank, if any, and the beneficiary. So we can say the irrevocable credit constitutes a definite undertaking by the issuing bank to make payment and thus is more beneficial to exporter. Secondly, according to whether the credit is confirmed by a third bank, credit can be divided into confirmed credit and unconfirmed credit. Confirmed credit carries the commitment to pay by both the issuing bank and the confirming bank. It constitutes a definite undertaking of the confirming bank in addition to that of the issuing bank and thus provides a double assurance of payment. Confirmation is only added to an irrevocable credit at the request of the issuing bank. It is used when the seller doesn't have confidence in the issuing bank or the political risk in the importer's country is very high. If the issuing bank is considered to be a first-class bank, there may not be any need to have its credit confirmed by another bank. If the advising bank confirms the credit, it must pay without recourse to the seller. 
unconfirmed credit bears no confirmation of the correspondent bank. It only has the commitment of the issuing bank. Compared to confirmed bank, unconfirmed credit is more popular. Thirdly, according to the way in which the credit is to be made available to the beneficiary, there are payments credit or side credit, deferred payment credit, acceptance credit, and negotiation credit. Payment credit is a credit available by side payment under which the nominated bank is authorized to pay against the shipping documents with or without a draft. Acceptance credit is a credit available by acceptance under which the nominated bank is authorized to accept the draft. The purpose of an acceptance credit is to give the importer time to make payment. If he can resell the goods before payment for due, he can use the proceeds to honor the bill of exchange. For the exporter, he can negotiable the bills of exchange accepted by a bank for financing. Deferred payment credit is a credit under which the beneficiary doesn't receive payment when he presents the documents, but at a later date specified in the credit. Different from an acceptance credit, no draft is required in the deferred payment credit. Negotiation credit is one under which a bank nominated their own is authorized to negotiate documents presented by the beneficiary. Different from other banks, negotiating bank has the recourse to the beneficiary when dishonored by the issuing bank. According to whether the credit can be transferred or not, there are transferable credit and non-transferable credit. And a transferable credit, the beneficiary called the first beneficiary may request the transferring bank to make a documentary credit available in whole or in part to one or more other beneficiaries called the second beneficiary. The transferring bank is the authorized bank to pay incur a deferred payment undertaking, accept or negotiate, or in the event of a freely negotiating credit, the bank specifically authorized in the credit as a transferring bank. The transferable credit is suitable where a middleman operates between the buyer and the seller. His profit being the difference in price. The transferable credit enables 
the middleman who is receiving payment from a buyer to transfer his claim uh, under the credit to his own suppliers. According to UCP 600, a credit can be transferred only if it is expressly designated as transferable by the issuing bank. Terms such as divisible, fractionable, assignable, and transmissible don't render the credit transferable. If such terms are used, they will be disregarded. A transferable credit can be transferred only once. That means the second beneficiary can transfer the credit to others, to the third or fourth beneficiaries. In practice, the transferable credit must be transferred under the terms stated in the original credit. However, the transferring bank may transfer the credits with the following changes. First, the name and address of the first beneficiary may be substituted for that of the original buyer. Secondly, unit price and uh, total amount of LC may be reduced to enable the first beneficiary an allowance for profit. Thirdly, the expiry, expiration date, final shipment date, and uh, final date for presentation of documents may all be shortened to allow the first beneficiary time to meet obligations under the original credit. Under transferable LC, the issuing bank takes payment responsibility to two or more than two beneficiaries. In particular, the issuing bank doesn't contact directly with second beneficiaries. So it is difficult for the issuing bank to control risks. Thus, some banks may refuse to issue transferable credits under such circumstances. Back to back credit is necessary to settle the middleman trade. Back to back credit involves two separate documentary credits, one opened in favor of the first beneficiary or the middleman, the other opened in favor of the second beneficiary for the account of the first or primary beneficiary who becomes the applicant for the second documentary credit. The first credit is used as security for the second credit. A back-to-back -back credit may be used when the credit 
issued in favor of the middleman isn't transferable. Or though transferable, it does not meet the requirements.